everybody. Welcome to Depot TV. I'm your host, Sherry Jackson, Executive Director of the Depot. And tonight is all about art. Sometimes when we put shows together, we are putting together these Depot TV episodes with musicians, artists, poets, stories, new creative segments on the horizon. You might want to stick around to the end of the show. Uh, and tonight we have a real treat. There is an artist from here in Norman who really has created his own style with the work that he does. And not only is it unique and beautiful, uh, he's also really good at showing you how it's done. And tonight we get to watch Brad Price paint. Make a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy Brad Price. Well, thank you for joining me as I paint this painting of Chamisa. Like I said, it's on the card for my show. And uh, the big one is on the wall here in my show. And I'm gonna make a 16 by 20 version of it. And so the first thing that I like to do, is I like to work with the grid. And so I will put a line, a vertical line down. I'm a little off, so I'll do it again. There we go. And then I'll make a horizontal line. And now this gives me some guidance to know what goes where in my painting. So now I'll just take each one of these at a time and I'll make a quick sketch of what I see in each one of these uh, areas. And so I see the top here of some chemisa. And I give a, just a general area of where the chemisa goes in this area. It comes down about to here. And then back in the back, I have a line for the background. And there's some color that begins here. So I've just made a few gestural lines to give myself uh, an idea of where this chemisa is now I'm down in this lower right rectangle and I'm looking at my go by and the sun, the snow goes along here. There's a stem that I want to make sure I get located correctly, just to the left of center, and it comes up this way. And there's a, some high, highlights of the bush there. And right over here, there's a line which comes down, another one that goes up. And then, I think I'm finished with that quadrant. This is just to show me the position that things are in. And then uh, in this quadrant, I can see we have the top of a piece of chemisa which comes over this way and down and comes on down. And then uh, I'll just keep sketching this silhouette of the top just roughly like that. There's a little gap back here. And then There's the beginning of the snow. And then I have a bit of chemisa that comes on across like this. Like this. And done with our sketch. Now I'm sketching this in with uh, some uh, yellow ochre. And I'm using yellow ochre because it's going to blend nicely with colors that I'm going to be using 
And so I don't have to paint over it, it's just going to blend in real nicely. Okay, we have a few little florets. Here's a boundary of the brightest area. We want to show where the highlights are. So I, I like to identify the highlights as I'm painting. All right, uh, let's finish up with the blue over here. Comes up about a third of the way. And then there's just left of center. And then one right here. Goes All right, so we have our rough sketch. And uh, let me just mention, this is not something that a lot of artists do, but I am real partial to it. I make my palette out of wax paper. And I lay down two layers of wax paper, and that way I have something cheap I can just roll up and throw in the trash when I'm done. Now we're going to paint this painting, starting with the lightest colors first. So as we block it in, we're not gonna paint any of the white uh, in oil paint yet. But we are going to leave those areas white. We're going to begin with a bright yellow. And our bright yellow is going to be the highlights on the tops of our chamisa. By the way, if anyone would like a digital file of the painting that I'm painting from, this one, if you will send me an email at Brad Price 51 at gmail.com. That's www.bradprice51 at gmail.com. I will send you one. Okay, I've got some yellow here. It's not very thick. I'm going to lay down our first colors fairly thin. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just paint the tips of this chamisa. So I'm only putting this where the tips go. This will tell me where the highlights are. Size of my rectangle and the other things that I've painted. Let's come on down here with our yellow. And it doesn't have to be terribly accurate because we're going to be using a couple of oranges and a sienna in order to finish out the The underpainting of this chamisa. Okay, there's a little stroke right down here. Some yellow up in here. We'll come over to this quadrant, looking at our photograph, and we'll do the same thing. Do this all over the painting. Use the same color all over. And I have a fairly wide brush. This is actually a a small paintbrush, household paintbrush, uh, one inch. Very cheap, but I love them for this kind of thing. Lays down a nice, thin coat. Alright, 
Now the colors back here are not as bright, so we're going to mix a different color for those. So now I'm going to add a little bit of my cadmium orange into the yellow. And this will be the color that kisses right up next to the highlights that we just painted. And so this color will, be, will fill in the area between the highlights in the bush here. So, You know, you can paint freely because no one will ever see the photograph that you use to paint a painting. So when you're painting it, the photograph is just for reference. You can actually put any color that you want anywhere. And as you get more confident about your own sense of color, this gives you a great deal of freedom. And you can let the painting almost paint itself. I'm putting a little orange down in here. This will be highlights. Uh, later on, I'm going to be painting lots of dark strokes, but I'll want to see some of this color even down there. So I'm going to go ahead and lay that in. Add just a little bit of turpentine. I'm using or or odorless turpentine as I paint. So far, still working with the same yellow, just adding, adding more yellow and a little bit of orange to it. So we'll finish up over here. And like I said, we can be loose in the beginning because as we go, we'll be more precise. So loose at the start and then more precise as we go along. Still using the same brush because I want to lay this down quickly and simply. Okay. Now then, the next color that we're going to paint is a little bit darker orange. So this is um, going to be a nice, strong orange. And we'll use this just up in some of the higher areas. For accent, a little bit darker. And these are very simple strokes. You can see I'm just laying them down very broadly because I want that color to influence that whole section. I hope you'll consider coming to my workshop where we'll be painting together and I'll be allowing students to paint whatever they want. They can bring their own subject matter. They'll be painting from photographs. You can bring your own subject matter and I will assist you as you paint the painting. All right, now we're going to begin using some color back in here. Let's 
just a little bit. To define this colorful area in the brush in the back. And I'm making strokes always that go in the direction of the growth of the plant. Let me set that down. It's time now for us to go to our uh, yellow ochre. And I'm going to use the yellow ochre. fairly straight here. See, we've gone from light, now we're coming down to a darker color. I'm just going to use this to put in some strokes of yellow ochre that, once again, are in the same shape as the, the plan. We'll just put these in, down in the darker areas of the plan. And if we paint over some area that we want to be brighter, well, we'll just go back and add it in.
come over to this side. And here's some of the well. So this side of the bush is in shadow. We're going to put this blue everywhere there's a shadow. We've got some running down this way. Here as well. Back right at the edge of that bush across the snow here. There's a little bit of that down here on the bottom of this bush. There's a little bit more up here, but we're not going to worry about that too much. I'm going to go in with some brighter or lighter, more pastel blue. And there are a few places that we need this pastel blue. One is right up in here. Another is here. And then back in here. And this one requires that I, that I define that edge a little bit of the chinesa. And so I'm careful with that, with that edge right there and here. Okay. Over here, there's a little area that means I need to come right up to the to be set and then out. And then down here we have one. This one. And then some horizontal lines that run across the snow. And then the snow comes right down into that chimisa point there comes right down in here, like that. Right here. guys it's me sherry and guess what this is it's a commercial actually it's a commercial for commercials we have time on depot tv and space and we need some partners to help support depot tv and keep it going but you know what we got we got this platform and audiences every week and if you sell a thing or provide a service or just want to support us and say thanks or if you have a shout out or something you want people to know about you could become a partner in the depot and have some commercial time of your very own. So give us a call at 405-307-9320 or email us at office at normandepot.org and find out how this commercial space could be your commercial space. Thanks.
And what I've done is I've gone in, light to dark, put in our basic colors, and then I went back through with um, just a brush, and I took some of the colors that were already on there. As you can see, I've gone around and defined everything a little bit better. Like right there, I've blended colors together. And what I've been trying to do is make a better sketch for myself with our basic colors that we blocked in. Just going around, you see like this, and defining these lines a little bit more. Like this, bringing that dark. up into the places where I want to be a little darker. But I'm also trying just to cover all of the white as well. Now, we are at the place where we're going to begin the process of adding thicker color. Now, what I like to do is go back over areas that I've already painted and paint in a thicker version. Uh, for example, a stroke like this. It's quite thick paint. I like to hold the brush like this and use its side. I make, I make long, thin strokes. Sometimes I make short strokes, but they, they have quite a bit of paint on them. So now I'm going to just go in here and I'm going to add color to enhance the natural look of the chemise. So I'm bringing some yellows up in here. There'll be some orange, there'll be a lighter yellow. And I'm adding to the texture of the chemisa, showing the direction in which it, it naturally grows. But the chemisa is made up of a lot of tiny, tiny little branches that grow out. And so I want to make sure that I'm showing that. So I'm just going to go through here and add this yellow orange. And we're going to be adding more and more colors. One of the wonderful things about color is that uh, you can play with color and you can cause color to vibrate. I like to make that happen with complementary colors. If you've ever been in one of my workshops, you know this is what I talk about a great deal, complementary colors. And if it looks like I paint, quickly, it's simply because I know what I want to do. And so why wait around? So every stroke that I put down here is a stroke that I've thought about. I'm not just going through and aimlessly putting down strokes. But as soon as I have the idea for a stroke, I go ahead and I paint it because it helps me to be more spontaneous it helps me to act a little bit more uh, with more confidence. Because you can always paint over a bad stroke. So if you make a bad stroke, the hard part is knowing that it is bad. That's the hard part. And that comes from experience. Okay, so I'm running out of the yellow. I'll put a little bit more on my palette. So we are in the stage, if you just joined us in this video, we are in the stage of adding thicker paint to our painting. We have, um, we have done the block in, we created the sketch, we know where everything is supposed to be, and now we are building up the texture of paint, but we're not putting any dark colors in because when you paint with oil paint, if you put any dark colors in, it will make your painting muddy. 
And so what we're doing is we're putting in pure, lighter color in an effort to to build up the color and texture and direction of strokes in our painting. Later on, when we're putting in the darker strokes, we'll follow these strokes. And these will be really the strokes that matter all the way to the end of the painting. Right now I'm using um, cadmium yellow deep hue right out of the tube. It's not mixed with turpentine, it's not mixed with any other color. The thing that you need to remember about color is that it is its most intense right out of the tube. Anything you do to the paint, uh, once you get it out of the tube, mix it with white or with another color, Anything that you do to it kills it. And so we want good, vibrant color in our painting. Okay. All right, I'm, I'm through basically with that color. I'm going to add just a little white to that. And uh, still enough white that I've got a nice, thick, paint and uh, I'm going to up in these highlight areas I'm going to use some of that lighter paint to give texture all over the highlight. There's some places right on the top that I'm going to go horizontal and then stroke down into So as we go, we'll build the thickness of the paint up little by little. very tempting to stop and mix a different color. But try to use that same color all over your painting. Uh, that goes faster that way, but it also creates color harmony in your painting. If you'll paint a color all over the painting. All right, 
So we're through with that one. We're going to add some white into that color. Now we're going to go back to that highlight color, that beautiful highlight color that we painted in the very beginning. But we're going to paint over those highlights with thick paint. So I've mixed the white into our yellow that we were just using, and this is what I'm coming out with. It's almost white, but not quite. It's a warm white. So now we will repaint those areas. Some of my strokes are, are going to be horizontal, followed by verticals coming down. highlights some of the wonderful textures of this plant. Make some long strokes. Establish the crown of each one of these. Then it doesn't look like nature at all. It looks 
it's like something that has been contrived. finished with this color. We've got a few vertical strokes up here to make with it. Okay, now we're going to go back with um, a thicker version of the uh of the orange. But this has just a little bit more of a pink feeling to it. It's sort of a pastel orange. And I'm going to use this some areas that I want to isolate and emphasize a little bit. So this is a special color that I won't use everywhere. But I will use it in areas that I want to put some detail in and that I want to come toward me. Because anytime you use red, red wants to come toward you. So, I'm also painting next to these other strokes that I just made because uh, very seldom a simple stroke looks great. It always is important to put another stroke next to it to modify it and sort of get rid of that human touch to the stroke. Okay. Put a little of it up here, just darken in this area here. It's nice to have that blush of sort of pinkish orange coming out from time to time. All right, we're going to go with a darker orange now. Almost a red, but very, very, very orange. And we'll use this as a darker stroke to define some of the darker areas of the chemisa. So these are areas that we wanted to go back, like at the base of some of these. And it may be, this could be a color that we'll use to define an edge. And then we'll paint just above that in order to move, move it back and move these forward. I don't know if you can see that, but we use this color down through here, it 
pushes pushes that part of the Janusa back. some of my lighter strokes with this one. I like to leave the lighter strokes that I've already made and paint between them like this. white areas. I know that I get more white out here and add a little lizard red which creates a beautiful pink color. It's a little dark so I'll add some more white and then uh, we'll, we'll do some pink out in these white areas 
can warm up some of that white. But we're gonna go back into those with really thick white paint. So we can be liberal with the pink because we're gonna be painting into that with white in a little bit. So I, I see a little down here, this corner, a little down here. Now then, there's a, a light blue that we need to add in. Very, very light. And it goes back in here. So I'll make some horizontal strokes that help me define that color. There's some right in here as well. And then we've got a little bit that comes through our shrub here. And some blue here. And I'm just putting it where I see it. And where, and where I see it or I want it to be. It's okay if you don't see a color and you just want to put it there, just do it. Okay. We've got pinks and blues. Um, a little bit darker blue. We're going to put some, some light shrubbery down in our blue area. So these will be bluish because they're in, they're in shadow. They give us a little bit of detail down here in the blue. Some more of that irregularity that I mentioned that you see in nature. Put some of that blue here to show some strokes of blue down in our bush here allows us to see through the chemisa. To the snow underneath. Like that. Okay. Very good. <clears throat> Now I think we're ready to put in some, some pure white. These will be pure white accents. Nice and thick, nice and heavy. And I'm going to lay these down with the side of my brush. Build up texture. I'm going to cover all of our white areas and then I'm also going to cover some of the pinks and blues. horizontal strokes. I'm 
beautiful thick paint. So some of this is going over the bare canvas. Some of it is going over blue, some of it over pink, and it's dragging some of that blue and pink through it. Keep in mind, we're still just working with color and with highlights. And we'll begin doing detail once this, once this part of the painting is finished. And we have most everything done in regards to color. Uh, that we need right now. I'm going to add a few strokes. That are a little bit more sienna. A little bit more tan looking. Okay back here in the back. Done our sketch and our block in. We've added thicker color everywhere. And now the next stage will be to begin adding detail. It's a commercial. Actually, it's a commercial for commercials. We have time on Depot TV and space, and we need some partners to help support Depot TV and keep it going. But you know what we got? We got this platform and audiences every week. And if you sell a thing or provide a service or just want to support us and say thanks, or if you have a shout out or something you want people to know about, you could become a partner in the Depot and have some commercial time of your very own. So give us a call at 405-307-9320 or email us 
at office at normandepot.org and find out how this commercial space could be your commercial space. Thanks. three of this painting of Chamisa. In phase three, what we're going to be doing is adding the detail and uh, we'll be using a black that I'm mixing using thallo green and alizarin crimson. Mix those two together and it gives you a nice black. And uh, if you mix a little more red, it gives you a warm black. If you mix a little more green, it gives you a cool black. So you can go both ways with it. Uh, and you can even go to a deep red or a deep green. Uh, so I like that option. And I'll be using that as we go through here. Now something else that we're going to be mixing is um, a dark brown. And we'll do that with the red and the yellow ochre. And then we'll also mix in a little bit of ultramarine blue. That'll give us a dark brown. Now our paint on our painting is wet. And so whatever we start out with, the longer we paint with it, the lighter the color will become. And so we'll need to go back from time to time and, and get some more. Also, we're going to be using, uh, for some of our detail, we're going to be using uh, violet gray. Now I'm using Georgian paint. I ordered the paint from Blick and uh, it looks like this in the tubes. Dollar, Dollar Rami Georgian. And this one is called violet gray. And so this, this color is excellent when you're putting some detail around areas that have yellows because uh, violet or purple, any color near that is a complementary of the uh, yellows that are in this painting. So I'm going to begin with our mixed black. And I'm just going to be working on the darker areas of the, the paint. So I'll, I'm going to start down here uh, toward the bottom. And I'm just making, uh, I'm using a number two flat and I can rotate it from the a thin side to the thick side, make a thin or a thick stroke, uh, whichever way I want. And so I am going to be following the strokes that I've already made. For example, down here, here is a, a red stroke. I'm gonna make a line on each side of that. And these are directional strokes like Van Gogh used. And so I am making these strokes lining up the strokes with the colors that I've already painted. And so I'm painting between those and that gives them it looks like I've painted these strokes over black but that's not what, what is happening. So since I have put a lot of thought into the strokes that I've already made, 
I can practically finish this painting by just following the strokes that are already here without looking at the photograph anymore. I do find it helpful though for guidance to look at the photo. But it's such a freeing thing to just follow the strokes that I've already made in this painting. So that's what I'm going to be doing mostly. It's just looking at the strokes that I've already made. And putting dark strokes next to them. So we're starting down here in the darkest part. You can see I've got a blue stroke there. It's horizontal, so I'm painting around that blue stroke. Sometimes I'll just do this and it'll be, give me a kind of meditative moment. I think that painting is, is a type of meditation anyway. thing about painting strokes like this is that I, I get to redefine every stroke that I've made because I'm making a stroke next to it. So if I don't like the shape of the stroke, I can make it thinner or thicker. Here is a little bit of the chemisa, which symbolizes a broken, a broken or a non-productive branch that's just sticking out, sort of a dry branch up here. I know I'm jumping, but I like this. I'm going to define that shape with this dark color and go into that area. So you see how I'm painting around those colors. Let's go back down here. I used to do uh, pointillism, which is a, a close kin to what I'm doing right now. Pointillism uses tiny dots to draw something. You can also do the same thing with lines. So uh, what I'm doing here, this could be a drawing with these dark strokes uh, drawn with a pen if I wanted it to be. But instead I'm making them
vast issue of darkness behind it. So now I'm going to go all over the top here. Defining the top edge. back into the the middle of our chemisa with lighter strokes that will help us define going over to this one and we'll work on the definition here as well. So there is a nuance to these strokes. Sometimes they're a little thinner, sometimes they're thicker. Sometimes once they, they lighten, I like to uh, use them that way. just uh, moves the thicker paint. Still using our mixture. Green and red. Painting primarily the silhouettes of the main parts of these chemises. Go back and get more paint about every two strokes. I just roll my brush around to pick up the paint.
So I'm painting those strokes right up next to the yellow ones that I've already made. And the blue ones here. Right in there, I'm following the strokes I've made before. And that, that's going to go a lot faster. So I'm going to establish, first of all, this edge down here. If a person comes out of the printing industry or has printed uh, t-shirts, this technique could be con considered trapping. What I'm doing is I'm trapping each stroke of color between the dark lines. And sometimes I'm overlapping the dark, dark line into the color. So I'm sort of trapping the color between the lines. Okay. All right, let's go up here do the same thing. Sometimes this dark line is something that I like to paint over a little bit too. So I'll go back with a lighter color and paint into the dark line so that it's not as thick. So one of the things that I do all the time in my painting is I modify a previous stroke that I've made by painting into it or next to it with another color. It gives me two opportunities to paint that stroke the way I want to. The first time when I paint it and the second time when I paint next to it. All right, I need to come down to here. To find this side of the chemise and bush, like that. And then uh, some of this area. guys it's me sherry and guess what this is it's a commercial actually it's a commercial for commercials 
we have time on Depot TV and space, and we need some partners to help support Depot TV and keep it going. But you know what we got? We got this platform and audiences every week. And if you sell a thing or provide a service or just want to support us and say thanks, or if you have a shout out or something you want people to know about, you could become a partner in the Depot and have some commercial time of your very own. So give us a call at 405-307-9320 or email us at office at normandepot.org and find out how this commercial space could be your commercial space. Thanks. I was just watching Brad paint, and that guy's real good. Say, I was looking for my friends. If you see them, let me know. <laughs>